Hey, good evening. God bless everyone. Thank you all so much for coming and joining with us tonight in tonight's Bible study. I'm Pastor T here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. Thank you all. Thank you so much for coming in. I want to give everyone an opportunity to come in and join in. Um, as we, you know, some folks are a little bit delayed in their coming in, and some folks maybe just getting the message that we're going live. And, you know, sometimes in the, in the course of there being a time, time uh, difference with the East Coast and the West Coast, uh, West Coast, Lord Jesus, I'm preaching to the West Coast, Marsha. East Coast and West Coast, Coast Central, and, and, you know, there may be a delay and in, in, in maybe a five-minute delay. And so some of you may be just now getting the message that we're going live when we've, we've been live for about five minutes already. So let me get you all to come on in, join in with us. We are uh, thanking God for you. We can have a, uh, you know, continuation Bible study. For those of you that have been with us, we're continuing in our Bible study. Uh, First Lady will be joining me momentarily while she's back there handling the media. She's going to be joining me momentarily. We have in the house uh, our uh, sister, Marsha. If you all was, 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 <laughs> had joined us on Sunday, she gave an awesome, um, I, I don't even want to call it an offertory message. I want to call it a word from the Lord that encouraged your heart uh, to be like Jesus. You know, some people call it an offertory message. It was, just a, it was a word that if you allow your heart to be like Jesus, Jesus will come back and, and just bless you. And so you remember Mar Sister Marsha, she was, she was here on Sunday, and so she's here with us tonight as well, and we thank God for her presence driving all the way down from, oh, it ain't Columbus no more. <laughs> she moved a little bit closer. She moved a little bit closer, so we, nonetheless, though, it was still a drive, considering those that live here in Opelika, and still ain't showed up yet. Anyway... We're going to leave that alone. We're going to wait on the first lady. You better hurry up and come over here, first lady, because you know I, you know. Anyway, let me talk about, okay, this is a, this Saturday. We have our family fun night this Saturday. I want everybody to come on out and join with us this, this night. If you're here locally and if you, you know, just want to be a part of it, uh, we're not going to be doing any live streaming Saturday. It's just going to be the, you know, the church church family and those, and friends and those that they join in that may join in with us and those that invite we're just going to have a good time of eating some small you know finger foods and and just just having a good time some popcorn I understand is going to be here oh I got to pick up the popcorn machine too I got to remember to do that I'm sure sister Debbie and mama Liz is going to remind me to do that pick up the popcorn machine and uh, we're just going to have a good time fun and games and just and just enjoy ourselves and laugh and uh, some folks will will be taking a whooping and I'll be able to see, you know, how they react after they get, you know, get, get a whooping. Uh, Talk about yourself like that. I'll be seeing how they, how they respond and they can still operate in love. Since we say that this is the British Church of Alabama, we're loving God, loving people. And so I want to see how they're going to love people after they get spanked. I think the devil will try that word of peace on you when you come. come uh, I'm glad your mic ain't on because when you, you know, when you talk and stuff that. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Mm -mm. That you word you talking. gave Sunday, you're going to need it. Saturday. The word peace. Oh, peace. Because you're going to have to have some peace. Look, I'm going to bring my peace up in here. Y'all don't <laughs> act right. <laughs> you're going to need some I'm gonna peace. Have my peace. I'm going to have my Saturday. peace all right in my black bag. <laughs> Y'all start you acting crazy. already done lost your peace. I lost a peace. Y'all know I'm just you joking, man. You already done lost your peace. I'm coming with love, the peace of God. I'm coming mm -hmm. with the love of God coming up with me, coming in with me. So we're going to have a good time. Also wanted to remind those that are tuning in with us and are here locally tomorrow night. Remember, Apostle Barnes is having a um, crusade at his church on the outside. It's called a tent crusade. Um, and uh, I think it starts at 7 o'clock tomorrow, 7 o'clock tomorrow. And so I want everyone to join in with us tomorrow night, those that can be with us. And I am, I'm actually going to start announcing, I know we're not even in November, but I'm going to start announcing that uh, Pastor Desmond and Pastor Jerrica will uh, have their first year anniversary, December the 5th. So we're glory, glory in God for that, man. That's great. They, they've been gone a year and they have had their first service. It's going on a year where they uh, had their the beginning of their their uh, ministry, and so we thank the Lord for them. And, and I'm trying to encourage everyone that I can, you know, that's local, to come on out and join us. We're going to be there 
and um, be a uh, participate in their anniversary, their first year anniversary, which is really so special. It is just to see what God has done in their lives over the last year and how, what he's, he's continuous, continuing to do in their lives. They're growing so much uh, spiritually, growing so much, and I am so proud of our spiritual um, daughter and, and son. Uh, so, so really pleased with them. All right, sweetie. So let's see. We, how are we doing as far as um, we got enough um, <coughs> folks so we can go ahead and get started? Because, you know, we want to get out of here and uh, start, start this ball rolling, man. Because we, we've got some serious teaching, man, that we need to do tonight. And so we want to make sure that we're taking care serious. of all of that. Oh, let me turn that down. All right. Well, all right, well, <clears throat> we've been talking about um, generational curses, the generational curse, and, and the question was, is, it, is there such a thing as a generational curse, and, and if it is, does it exist in your life? We, had, we didn't even deal with that last, last week, so today we're going we're gonna to talk about just a, a, a quick recap, and since my, my recaps are always so long, I'm going to let the first lady do a recap from last week, and then that way I don't have to be pressured about me talking too much because she says my recap is like going through and teaching all over again. You know it is. And I have to do that because I have to remind her because there may be some people that may not have been with us last week, and so I want to make sure we leave nobody. See, I'm, I'm, I'm military, man. We leave no man behind. No well, that's man the benefit behind. of tuning in. That's the benefit of going back and watching the replay, or that's the benefit of being Ooh, there in person. I, so you have to take the people that who are billing. You have to consider the people who are being diligent, who are showing up, you know, who are on time. Wow. And you, you really have to just just do a recap. Wow. I, well, you know what? That's, that's wisdom back there. And I heard wisdom back there, too, over there in the corner. And when Marsha was like, hey, man. Yeah, you have to be considerate. So I thought, yeah, you got a couple of witnesses out there. Yeah. I didn't know that, baby. Okay, so I, I'll try. Y'all, so, so when you all want to know what to pray for me, that's stuff like that. That's what you need to pray on me for. You know, pray, all, pray for me for. You know, that God would give me the wisdom on how to come back and condense the recap and so that it will be good enough for everyone to be able to join in because my concern is that I, I just don't want to leave anybody behind. Mm -hmm. I never want to do that. Amen. So uh, diving in here, uh, did you, you prayed already? I didn't. Okay. Won't you pray? Mm -mm. You don't want to pray? No, you can pray. You want me to I'm pray? I'm doing a recap, yeah. I'm doing a recap. So if I, was, if I did the recap, would you pray? Yes. All right, so I'm going to still let you do the recap because I because. Because of what we just said. Because <laughs> we be here at 7 o'clock. I'll be teaching this thing all over again. Let's pray, dear. Yes. Father, we thank you. We thank bless you. Father. You we are so worthy to be evening. praised in all God. your awesomeness. Lord, yes. we just exalt you. We thank you for today. All that has happened. Thank it you, it just didn't happen Hallelujah. because... Um, it decided to, it happened because you allowed it to. Yes. We thank you, God, that even in our course of our day, you've allowed us to even be here right now. Yes. Father, which means that there's a purpose in us being here. And we allow ourselves, we release ourselves, God, into your hands that you will speak through our lips. Father, that you will allow us to not only to teach, but to be taught by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we decree and declare that you will have your way today. Have your way. We release our, our, our will into your hands. We thank you for everyone that's listening and everyone yes. that's joining in. We thank you for everyone who's sharing this, this live stream. Father, that it will benefit, God, the very ones that need it the most, Lord God, in and it will benefit, God, even those that feel like they don't need it, those that need it the least. But I know that your word will not return into your void. Yes. It shall accomplish that which you sent it out to do. Yes. And that is where we have our confidence in. It's in your word and it's in your purpose for your word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you for praying, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. So the first thing we covered last week was we gave a definition of what a generational curse is. We actually had some good feedback from those who were watching. Oh, yeah, we did. And basically, we all came in agreement that generational curses, that they begin with beliefs, they begin with thoughts, mm -hmm. and um, 
is something that is practiced. So um, we're going to read what you have here. Okay? Let's see here. So what you have here is generational curses are really generation, generational consequences, right? Mm -hmm. Or generational <clears throat> uh, residue from leftover sins or choices that we make. We make or our forefathers or, or parents have made. I, well, both. Yeah, see, because I'm, like from the standpoint of where we are, if I'm operating in a certain behavior, I would say, well, I'm this way because my grandfather was that way. And so that's a, that's a consequence of his behavior. Mm -hmm. Right? So I'm, I'm just, I just want to make it clear that when we talk about con uh, generational con sin, gen con generational sin, that we're talking about the sins of our foreparents, forefathers. You know, that have that, that that because that's why we call it generational. So because it's generational, which means it's coming down from generation to generation to generation. And so here we are in this generation. I just want to go ahead and continue no, recap. Go ahead. I'm, you're, you're, you're breaking it down in the recap. Go ahead. And so we wanted to make that clear that, that the generational right. curse is not. The other thing we want to make clear was that a generational curse is not a generational curse, is not a curse that God has put on a person or people or family. God does not curse a family. Yeah, I was he, go ahead. That's why I want you to do it, weird, because I'm going to teach this whole thing over again I if don't you don't. Want, but I wanted you to say or to make the statement of what you were trying to say with the generational consequences. Mm -hmm. I was allowing you to elaborate on that point, okay. not go into the rest of it. All right, go ahead. <laughs> Continue. Anyway, so, okay, back on track here. So uh, what is passed down is not a curse in the sense that God is cursing the family tree. What is passed down is the consequence of sinful actions and behavior. Thus, a generational curse is really a function of sowing and reaping passed down from one generation to the next. So man, okay. You're reading too fast, baby. You got to remember, people are trying to catch up, man. You can't read it too fast because they don't have our notes. But then I don't want them to have to go back and read and, and, and do this and look at this review. I want them to be with us. That's why I do my recap like that, Marsha, because I like for people to be with us. I don't want to leave nobody. See, be reading so fast, man. Okay, go ahead. You agree? I agree that I understand why you do your recap the way that you do, because like you said, you don't want to leave anybody behind. But at the same time, for the people who are here and keeping up that have been watching, they're sitting and waiting on the edge for the next. Oh, uh, got you. So it's kind of like, you know, you kind of, you can't keep them waiting too long, but then you got to catch them up. So it's got to find a happy So I got to find a, a, a good medium to right. be in. All right. So one big good medium is that if she's doing a, a, a uh, recap, the medium is slow down in her reading. Can we do that? Can we agree? <laughs> we can agree. Slow down in your reading so you don't lose those people because we, we have to, there has to be a happy medium for both people that are just joining us that were not here last week. And so we need her to slow down just a little bit in her reading. She can still do the recap, and she don't have to do all that I would do in a recap, but just slow down in the reading. And let's see how that works. What else you got, dear? That's it. <laughs> she said, that's it. All right, so see that? All right, so that's all she got. So let, can I, can, let me pick back up where mm -hmm. she left off. Mm -hmm. uh, so now we see, number one, we know that God does not um, create a generational curse right. and place it on a family. Right. What it is is it's the sinful behaviors that one may do in a family that, if not corrected, the generations after that or the generations from that, that seed, that mother or that father, can pick up those particular, those particular behavior, mm -hmm. behavioral habits or behaviors and begin to mock or begin to do those same things. And, and they do those things they, because they think it's okay because they don't recognize sin or their behaviors as sin. Now, this is, well, let's, and let's move forward. I just wanted to make sure we understand that. So 
what I talked la- what we talked last week was that um, the actual generational curse is not what our forefathers done; it's what Adam and Eve done. That's right. the generational curse. The generational curse began way back in the very beginning with Adam and Eve. Right. That that's the generational curse. Mm-hmm. And and that generational curse is when sin first came into the world. And once sin came into the world, now it's generational, mm-hmm. all the way down through mankind. And uh, David said this in in Psalms, um, what was it? Psalms chapter. You might have it in your notes, real quick there. Psalms chapter fifty one. Psalm chapter 51, what do you say? Verse 5. Yeah, what do you say? Surely I was sinful, sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Mm-hmm. That was David. David saying yes. that I came into this world as a sinner, basically. Mm-hmm. And so is everyone. Everyone comes into this world as a sinner. Mm-hmm. That's not because your forefathers, not because your grandfather, your great-grandmother was a sinner, because Adam sinned right. before God. Right. And so that's that's a that's a generational curse. Mm -hmm. Everything else that we're that we were everything else that happens in our lives is because throughout generations, our forefathers, whoever is um, allowing those sins to come down into our generations, Mm -hmm. they're happening because they did not repent and they never got their life right. And so if you don't get your life right, then, of course, Gener- through generation, you will continue to have a generational sin in your life. It's just a generational sin. I, I wanted to use this uh, scripture that we used last week, coming out of uh, coming out of uh, uh, Exodus chapter thirty-four. But I want to begin with verse seven because I want to show how we even got that terminology from the Bible of a generational curse. So let's go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 7. And I'm, I'm coming out of the NIV version, but I want to read verse 7 first. Verse 7. Uh, and, you, and you may have to may catch up to me because it may, it may pick up. I think it picks up earlier from where I'm going to start. Exodus chapter 34, verse 7, the NIV version says, where I'm picking up, it says, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. They're talking about God. Moses is talking to, talking to um, the children of Israel. And he says, this is what God has said. God has said, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. That's where we got that term, generational curse. Mm-hmm. From this particular scripture, People have used this, and, and it, goes to, it goes to our teaching and our learning that you cannot take a, just a, a certain verse or a right. certain part of the Bible Correct. And, and begin to use it because everything that was said prior to that scripture has substance. Correct. And things that have to be, have to be said after the scripture have substance. But what people have done is they've taken that with the absence of knowledge and understanding and proper teaching. They've used that little scripture Exodus 34, 7, and said, man, that's why this person does what he does. That's why we have, that's why we have high blood pressure in our lives. That's why uh, so-and-so is an adulteress. That's why so-and-so is a murderer because his father was a murderer or his, his mother was a pr- prostitute or his mother's mother was a prostitute. And they, or uh, they had, what do you call that, um, when um, a teenage pregnancy, when there's a, a line of teenage pregnancy People will say that's a curse, mm-hmm. and it's, that's not a curse. What it is is a behavior that has continued a to go on. A learned behavior. What is it? A learned a behavior. A learned behavior that just continued in the lives of the children on right. and on and on because no one ever stopped the behavior and said, stop, time out. This is not right. This is not what we ought to be doing. Right. That reminds me of the saying that I've heard before or just a little story about um, – this family, I, I can't even remember exactly how it goes, but there was a family where they would always cut off the the, the butt of the ham. Right. And right. so it ended up be, becoming a tradition in the family. From so it, whenever it was time to cook a ham, they would always cut off the butt of the ham. Right. And then finally, one generation said, "Okay, well, why do we always cut the butt off the ham?" And then it was learned. Well, that's because your great 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 grandmother 
didn't have a pot big enough to cook the ham in. That's exactly. why she could. So it's like you, we, we practice things or we continue to, to do a learned behavior without fully understanding why we're doing why it. We're doing it's it. like we just do it. Right. Right. We just do it just because we see somebody else doing it, mm -hmm. really don't even know why. Mm -hmm. And so you look 10 generations down the line, you got circle lawn, you got uh, uh, all kind of analon pots and pans and all kind of pamper chef. You got all of these stock pots. You're, you got things that are large enough to cook your ham, but you still cutting the butt off. Because you saw your great great grandmother cut the right. butt of the ham off, right? Thinking that something was wrong with the ham. <laughs> or yeah, it, it was up. Some, it ham. wasn't nothing wrong with the ham. Yeah. But those are the kinds of things, right? That we do now. That was won't hurt somebody spiritually, but when we see people do things and put things in practice, that we do, that is when it becomes a curse because. You continue to do this bad behavior. Right. Like Aunt Shirley said it. She said the same thing, learn behavior. Right. Aunt Shirley, thank you. You want to say something, behavior. Marcia? Yes. Um, just what you said, it, we do the things that are bad behavior. It also, um, in doing those things, it doesn't allow for the person to take responsibility for their actions because it's easy for them to say, well, uh, great-grandpa was an alcoholic mm -hmm. or... My uh, my daddy and my grandpa and my auntie, they all did drugs or, you know, whatever the case right. may be. And so they're not taking full responsibility for their actions. Right. right. Exactly. Yep. And and so so we use this scripture, going back to Exodus, we mm -hmm. use that scripture, Exodus chapter 34, 7. And that's how we came up with generate, speaking that into the lives of people, saying that this must be a, 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 a generational curse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but what we don't do is go back and read the scripture before that. Okay. And so let's go to Exodus chapter 34, verse 6. In Exodus chapter 34, see, what we've done, we've isolated that particular verse of scripture and we use it. And, and I say we use it, but you got to remember that the, the enemy, the devil, Satan, is tricky. So he'll, he'll use, he knows the Bible. Yes. And he'll allow us to use the Bible incorrectly. Yes, he will. As long as it causes, you know, causes us to continue to, to be ignorant. Right. And the Bible tells us that we ought not be ignorant of Satan's devices. Exactly. But he'll allow us, he'll do whatever he needs to do to make us ignorant of, of, of what the real word is trying to tell us. Mm -hmm. And so, but if we go back and we read verse 6, and, and the whole full scripture now, verse 6 and 7, let's go back there and let's read verse 6. And again, I'm coming out of NIV version, Exodus chapter 34, 6 and 7. I'm going to read the entire verse now. And it says, and he passed in front of Moses proclaiming, this is the Lord God himself, mm -hmm. passed in front of Moses proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. Now listen, listen he, God is describing himself. Mm -hmm. He's saying that he's, he's compassionate. And he's gracious, meaning that he gives grace. He's slow to anger, which means it takes a whole lot for him to become angry. Mm -hmm. He's abounding in love, meaning that, that, that he's full of love. And faithfulness, you can trust him, he's faithful. Mm -hmm. He says this, maintaining love to thousands, this means his love is, un, is unending. Mm -hmm. And forgiving, listen now, listen, check this part out now. He's also forgiving wickedness. He forgives rebellion and mm -hmm, sin. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he says that this is the type of God I am. Right. And then it goes on and then he continues to say, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He goes on to say that, but those who, who do not follow me and do the things that I require of them to do, mm -hmm. he says that I have to punish you. If you don't do what I ask you to do, if you don't follow righteousness, if you don't live according to my ways, he says, he says that I cannot leave you because you're guilty of sin. I cannot leave you unpunished. Right. He said there has to be a consequence of your sin. Mm -hmm. And so, so it goes on and says he punishes the children and their children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation. What the, what the scripture is saying is that he allows the consequences of their sin to, to fall on the children. He doesn't stop it. He allows them as, because we have free will. And so he, does not, he doesn't stop their sin. He gives them instructions on how to stop their sin, but he doesn't stop their sin. We have to choose to stop the sin. 
And he says, if you don't stop the sin, if you don't stop doing it, then your children will continue to do it. And it's going to go on to, it says, what generation? It's going to go on to the third generation. It's going to go on to the fourth generation. And that's what sin does. It, it continues to repeat itself over and over and over again. So sinful behavior, it doesn't stop just because um, you say you're going to stop. You know, it, it, it has to be a decision. I can tell you all day long you need to quit smoking, but you have to make the choice to quit smoking. And we talked about this last week. What our children watch us do, if they watch us do it, and if it's sin, sinful behavior, they watch us do it, and we live amongst them and continue to live our lives as though there's nothing wrong with it, that's what their mindset believes, that there's nothing wrong with it. It must be okay for daddy to have three women, you know, over the weekend. Ain't nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to have three women because that's what I saw. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to grow up and I'm going to have three women. I'm never going to get married because daddy never got married because daddy always taught me if you get married, it's like, you know, walking around with a ball of ball and chain. Because daddy was never taught what marriage was. Mm -hmm. And he, so he never reverenced marriage. So he taught his sons that don't get married. And that becomes a, and that becomes a consequence of sin, which can lead to going on from generation to generation to generation. Thus, you have generational curse. So when we pray and say, you know, to break generational curse, what we're actually praying is that uh, each generation will make better choices, will make the right choice or choose life. It, we can pray for the generations to come, but we have to pray for the present current generation that right. that so we pray for us first right we make sure that we're right first mm -hmm. and then we pray on right. the bible says this Do you remember the bible uh, uh, um, um job in the very first chapter of job what did job what did the, the bible starts up in the very first chapter of job and he starts up and he talks about he said there was a man in the in the what the city of us and he said that, and I'll paraphrase it so we, we don't have to go there so we can continue to move on. He said that Job got up every day and he went to the temple and he prayed for his sons. Sure and he did. prayed, he prayed over them. And he prayed that even if he didn't even think that, that if they sinned or didn't sin, he prayed that God would forgive them of their sin so that there would not be a generational uh, uh, I behavior. I think that holds a lot of weight. I think we should read that. Okay, let, well, let's go there. I think that we should definitely read that because that's really good. Let, let's go there. Mm-hmm. Because that's that's what you're saying, mm -hmm. and I, I remember that in that you're you're absolutely right. Um, so so he prayed that uh, he, whether they sin, you know, even if they did sin, he didn't know, but he was just praying that if they did sin, you know, if they could be forgiven, so it could be stopped right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he he Joe was doing what we do today. What you were just talking about, making intercession. Make an intercession. Mm -hmm. uh, Job chapter 1, verse, verse, verse uh, uh, this is the NIV. NIV. Yeah, you, we can start at um, 4. It, it'll be 4 through 4 and 5. Uh, and this is Job here. His sons used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. Regular custom. He did it every day. Because Job understood what a gener he understood what sin was. He understood that sin will continue to, to infest. And it, it, would, it, would, it would be like cancer. It would begin to infest. It would take, take over the lives of his very children. That's good. Mm -hmm. And it would continue to go on from generation mm -hmm. to generation. And so he, being the righteous man that he was, right. He, he made intercession for his mm -hmm. children. He went before the Lord and prayed that there be no generational curse, mm -hmm. that there be no, mm -hmm. no re repetition of sin. Which in, is so good. Lives. So basically, Job had cut off the curse in his own life. He had cut it off. Yes. Because in the beginning, in verse 1, it says, In the land of us, there lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God and shunned evil. 
but yet he still prayed for his children right. that they would not be cursed right. That's because right. of their sins and because of their choices. Exactly, sweetheart. Exactly. Because just like for us, when if something skips a generation, it can skip a generation and continue on. Right. So, yeah. Exactly. And the reason why it can skip a generation and, and catch on to the next generation, because every generation, every person has to make a decision on whether or not they're going to sin or right. not. Right. And so that's, and that's the thing. Mm -hmm. I could be a righteous man and, my, and, and, and raise my children up in a righteous household. Mm -hmm. They can leave my household, mm -hmm. go into their own household, exactly. and decide that they want to start sinning. Right. It's a choice. Yes. And then now their children's children right. begin. Could stand to, to have the curse. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Which is the curse of sin itself. Right. It's a curse of sin. Right. There's a scripture in the Bible I wanted to go to last week, John chapter 9. Let's go there. John chapter 9. Mm -hmm. And uh, John chapter 9 in the first verse, Jesus came up on the scene. In fact, I'll read it real quick for you. This is really good while you're looking for that because... Because I'm sitting here thinking, and I know that there are people, and I have said this my own self out of a lack of understanding. Like I have, you know, people that I know and in their family, they may, all of the women in their family may be uh, without husbands, they may be single mm -hmm. or divorced. Mm -hmm. And so, been divorced three or four times. Right. So <laughs> I'm thinking that it's a, like a curse, like a spiritual curse on the family. Right. But, it could very well be, um, God knows, it could be a number of things. It could be perhaps, you know, uh, lack of submission, humility. It could be pride. It could, it could be a number of, a things, number of things that the women may be operating in based on their choices. Right. Or they may just be deciding, I'm, I am want to stay single. That right. could be as simple as that. It, could, it may not even be anything wrong with them, but them just making the decision. I'm gonna be single. Right, exactly. But so, but then you see, you know, all these generation and nobody's married, or even when you see people and you know it's like, and we mentioned it kind of briefly last week, but someone who may be broke mm -hmm. it's like they're always they always are broke, no money, and then it's like it just goes down. It's like. Right, poverty. It's right, like every right. It's like a spirit of poverty like on, a, on, of a, poverty family, on but, a family. And it really is a spirit of poverty it is, on a family. But it's because of their choices. It's because of the choices. It's because of the choices. Because if you make proper choices, then you can, you can change your, your life. Right. You yeah. can change your life. Right. Look, watch this. Let's go to uh, John chapter 9, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm gonna read what through yeah one through three. I'm gonna just read John chapter nine verse one through three in the New Living Translation in the NLT. John chapter nine verse one through three in the NLT version it says, "As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. Listen to the story now. The man was blind from birth." John chapter chapter nine verse one through three in the New Living Translation. He saw a man who had been blind from birth. Rabbi, his disciples asked him. Who asked him? His disciples. It wasn't the Pharisees. It wasn't the uh, Sadducees. It wasn't the religious sect that asked him that. It was his disciples, the ones who, who did not grow up religious. Mm -hmm. The ones, the disciples, remember now, the disciples were not priests. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they were just average folks. Right, right. So they didn't have, like, a whole lot of good teaching, you know, where they were going to the to the. Uh, uh, it wasn't in the theology schools. Yeah. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, they didn't have all that. Right. So te Jesus is teaching them now. Mm -hmm. And so they, they were raised with certain beliefs about the Bible, but they were not taught properly. So Jesus says, so they asked Jesus, Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Good question, disciples. Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Why would they ask him that? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? Because they were taught that one section of scripture that it was a generational curse. That you being born with a deformity or, or a dis disability like that, it had to be because someone sinned or the man sinned. 
Look, watch Jesus' response. Jesus said this. It was not because of his sins or his parents' sins. It had nothing to do with it. He says, Jesus answered, this happened so the power of God could be seen in him. Meaning that there are certain things that come to, that, that you are born with and it has nothing to do with your forefather's sin, anything like that. Some things are just hereditary, you know, because of your forefathers did not take care of themselves properly. They didn't eat properly. They, they did a lot of pork. And so now they end up with blood pressure. What is the, you know, there are genetic things that happen in our lifestyles right. because DNA. of, mm-hmm. it's in our DNA. Mm-hmm. But it's not, not because of sin. You were going to say something, Marcia. Because it made me think about how, you know, sometimes when you hear people talking about people are laughing at others or their children, they're like, uh, be careful now. You know, you, have a ch- you might have children one day. Right. So, so as if that carries over to how your right. child is going to turn. Right. I remember that. I remember we were taught as a child, don't mock mock somebody who who had like Down syndrome or something like that, because they were saying if you mock mock somebody like that, you get, you could end up with a curse, and your children would be cursed because you mocked them. Mm-hmm. And and that's that. I mean, think about some of the things that we have been taught and raised up on. So we now I just want to make sure. Okay, so we have an understanding of what a generational curse. Number one, a generational curse is not something that God puts on people. Mm -hmm. It is a response or consequence of someone who have sinned that have passed their behaviors on to us. And this is a consequence. Right. It's a consequence. If I have blood, if I had why, if, 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 if it was a generational curse in my family. And, and, and I surely is on tonight. She can attest to this. And I don't know how far back our alcoholism and our family go back, I surely. Right. I, I, I remember that it goes all the way back to, to my grandfather, to, to Sam Middleton. Mm-hmm. And then I knew my grandmother was an alcoholic. I knew my mother was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. If there was a generational curse, why did it stop at me? If it was a generational curse, why did it, why did alcoholism stop at me and stop at Pam? Right. Meaning if it was something spiritual. If it was something mm-hmm. spiritual. Right. If it was something that God put on, on my family, right. how, how, why did it stop at me? Right. Because it had nothing to do with it being a spiritual curse that God put on my family. It was, a, it was the choices that me and my sister decided to make. At a certain point in our lives, someone told us about... The, the Bible told us about God, told, about, told us about everything that he said about himself, that he was loving, that he was faithful, that, that he's forgiving. And we made choices not to live that type of life. We didn't have to, me and Pam, we didn't have to go and get, go to rehab to get, get to, to, or, or go get uh, hands laid on us. You know, for, yeah, what they call that when you got to get a spirit taken out of you? Yeah. Um, An exorcism or anything like that. You know what I mean? What, what's that? Not exorcism, but uh, yeah. deliverance. Deliverance. Yeah, that's it. That's it's the, the same, same thing. thing. Deliverance. Yeah, exorcism. I, I'm used to the, you know, exorcism reminds me. Yeah, the layman term. <laughs> exorcism is the TV term. No, that's the real. That's around. the real thing. That's the real thing. Come on now. But deliverance. Whole... We didn't have to go and and do all that. Why? Because we we're we gonna get to that why tonight. We are gonna get yeah, to that why tonight. Yeah, because I want us to really really talk about, you know, how do we Mm -hmm. not, um, how do we cut the curse? How do we end it? That's where we're going now. Let's go there now. Let's go there now. All right, let's, let's, let's do this. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 29 through 30 in the NIV version. Jeremiah chapter 31 verse 29 and 30 in the NIV. And it says this. It says, In those days, people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Listen to what, it, what it's saying now. You got to remember now, this is, this is Old Testament reading, but this is what they're saying. The, that that in, the, in those days, people will no longer say, in those days, those days being now, that the parents, that people will no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes and the children's teeth are set, set on edge. Instead, everyone will die for their own sin. Whoever eats sour grapes, their own teeth will be set on edge. What the scripture is saying that it has nothing to do with what my parents, right. the, the, what my parents have done. It's all about what I choose to do. Mm-hmm. If I eat sour grapes, I'm causing my own teeth 
to become rotten because I eat sour grapes. It had nothing to do with my, 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 right. my parents. It was about what I decided to do. While you, have to, while, while, you, while you may have to deal with the effects of the unrepentant, sinful behavior of your parents, you are still responsible for your own choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. Now, even though whatever our parents or forefathers did, there may still be consequences behind that. Right. That, that I'm not saying that you know you're going you, you one day you wake up and and what they did does not affect our lives. Right. It does affect our lives. I said this last week and, and I remember Deacon Corbett asking, you know, what does that mean when I said that you are a product of your environment? Mm -hmm. You are a product of your environment, but you have to understand that once you allow Christ to come into your life, now you can create your own environment. Right. You begin to create your own environment. Mm -hmm. You begin to create your own world once you allow Christ to come into your life because now you take power over your own life. You don't allow Satan to have power and possession or dominion over your life. You take dominion over your right. life. Right. And I say that because let's go to this. Let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 17 and 18 in the NIV version. Romans chapter 5, 17 and 18 in the NIV version says, For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, mm -hmm. how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision mm -hmm. of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, mm -hmm. so... Also, one righteous act resulted in justification mm -hmm. and life for all people, mm -hmm. meaning that because what Jesus did, now it's reversed. Now we can reverse all those things that has happened in our lives. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The remedy to break the curse of Adam's sin and the consequence of your parents' sin is found in Jesus Christ. That's good. That's what that's, that's the so remedy. Good. The remedy is not trying to, you know, you can go through and I'm not trying to tell anybody that counseling is bad. You may need counseling, but the primary right. thing you need is Jesus first. Right. I would say <laughs> let Jesus be your foundation. Go to counseling. Yeah. But but allow. Give, and when you go to counseling, what we're doing is we're giving Jesus, we're giving God something to work yeah, with. This is good right here. Giving mm -hmm. God something to work with. Any person born again in Jesus Christ has been made brand new and you are no longer under the curse of any sin. Mm -hmm. You're not under the curse of sin once you give your life to Christ. Right, right, right. Because the word tells us, uh, I'm not, you may know the scripture, to be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. Romans chapter 12, verse yes. 1 and 2. Yes, Romans yes. chapter 12, verse and 1 and that, 2. That is the beginning of... Uh, um, Canceling the curse. That's the beginning of canceling Cancelate the curse. Canceling the curse of the sins. And this is what I always, and, and you may remember me teaching this. We, we're good at giving people this scripture when they first get saved. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Right. Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And in King James Version says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Mm -hmm. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. In the Amplified Version, that same verse, mm -hmm. that same verse, verse of Scripture in the Amplified Version, let me read that. Again, I'm coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. I'm reading out of the Amplified Version. Mm -hmm. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is, mm -hmm. grafted in, joint to him by faith, in him as a savior. Now remember, to allow Jesus Christ into your life, it requires faith. Right. Faith to realize or to believe that Jesus is able to do what he died on the cross mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. He died on the cross to get rid of the sinful nature. Mm -hmm. That you don't you no longer have to live a sinful life anymore. Right. You don't the, the sinful nature that we were born with does no longer have to have control over you. So by faith, you allow Jesus Christ to come in and you have to be grafted into him and joined into him. And it goes on and says uh, that is grafted in, joined to him by faith in him as savior. He is a new creature. The person that gives their life to Christ becomes a new creature, mm -hmm. reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. That's, good. That's the other key. The, yes, Holy, the Spirit Holy Spirit is the does one that the does renewing. the renewing. That's good. Pastor. The Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now it goes on and says the old things, which is the previous moral 
and spiritual condition, the old things, the, your old mindset, the old behaviors, mm-hmm. all those things. What happens is when you give your life to Christ, the Holy Spirit begins to shine light on those things or those behaviors that are not like God. He shines a spotlight on them and he begins and he begins to. And I'm going to tell you, the Holy Spirit begins to talk, 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 talk at you. It's called conviction. When you continue with those behaviors, he starts convicting your heart. Because the more you get, the more you learn of God, the, the Holy Spirit starts convicting your heart. Right. And you begin to know, man, this is not, I'm not comfortable right. doing this anymore. Right. I'm not comfortable sleeping around anymore. Right. I'm right. not comfortable, you are, your behaviors, you begin, to, you begin to realize and you begin to lose the taste mm-hmm. or the appetite. That's a good word. Mm-hmm. You begin to lose the appetite for the, for the behaviors, yeah. which were sinful behaviors. Mm-hmm. And it goes on and it says, The previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. And that's when we go back to that's why you have to go back to Romans chapter 12, verse one and two, because these two scriptures have to connect. Yeah. Can you pull that up? Yes. I I got it. I'll, I'll pull it up. The, these because two scriptures go go hand in hand, yeah. hand in hand. You can't teach Second Corinthians chapter five and seventeen without teaching Romans chapter twelve verses one and two. Yeah, you can't because that's that it has to happen in the mind. Yeah, because if you think about it, if somebody is raised up in the household, and even when we talked about when you talked about uh, sicknesses, you know, in families and, and the, that type of thing. Really, if we think about it. Even that could be choices because let's say for an example, if I grew up in a house and you mentioned pork earlier, but if I grew up in a house where we had fried chicken, fried fish, we ate fried food like three or four times a week, right? If I start doing that from age, let's just say from birth all the way to most people are with their parents at age 16, 17, Mm -hmm. I would just say that. Right. So you grew up eating fried chicken, fried fish, all of this from from birth to age 16, 17. Mm-hmm. What do you think that that has done to your body? The right. the cholesterol, the high blood right. pressure. So is it really in your DNA or is it really a learned behavior? So mm-hmm. then when you go, so guess what? You go on to Chick-fil-A and Chick-fil-A sandwich, you go on to churches, you go on to Popeye's. You're continuing this bad set of habits mm-hmm. that have been established, mm-hmm. but but we don't seriously. We do not, as a people, it is easier for us to say generational curses because it's super spiritual. Right, it sounds super spiritual. It's spiritual because it's easier for us to say that it's something spiritual that is in us more so than us changing the choices and changing our behavior. Making a decision to change our behavior. Yes. You want to say something? Yes. Um, just, just agreeing on what um, First Lady was saying because the health thing. Um, my youngest daughter um, said her blood pressure was high lately. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, well, you know, uh, I guess, uh, you know, dad has high blood pressure. You have. I said, no, no. I said, you don't have to have high That's blood right. pressure. Right. You know, and so, you know, she has started changing, making better choices on her right, eating. Right. And I agree with yeah. what First Lady said is yeah. right. And and so right. we, and that's how we continue to cycle. Right. We we don't think to, that it's, it's, and it's, we try to complicate everything. Yeah. Yes, God is a spirit, but there are some things that we have to do in the natural. We got to do some things in the natural. We have all the tools to do. Yes, and when we think about it, when we think about some people that may have come up in homes where they were less fortunate or they had, you know, came up where their parents were both alcoholics, drug drug addicts, but they have gone on to become stellar people. They've They've gone on to have successful lives. The difference is the choices. They just made better choices. They didn't like the life that they had or that they saw their parents and their past generations leading, so they decided that they were going to make better choices. It's in our choices. It's in our choices. It's in our choices. We we were talking about Romans chapter 12, verse verse, uh, verse 1 and 2. I love reading this out of the Message Bible. I mean, you all can read it out of the King James, whatever version, but... I want to read it out of the Message Bible because the Message Bible breaks it down in layman terms. 
This is what the Message Bible says. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 in the Message Bible. It says this. And this is Paul. And he just, he, I mean, he just down the earth. Paul says this. He says, so here's what I want you to do. And he's telling you this is what I want you to do because he's, he, previously they talked about the, 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 the sinful nature and everything. But he's telling you this is what I want you to do. God helping you. I always say that. I always emphasize that part. I have to. God helping you. The Holy Spirit helping you. Don't try to do this on your own because you may many times fail over and over and over again. So if you want to completely resolve this issue that you're having, allow God to help you. Take your everyday life, ordinary life, your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. You take everything, basically your whole you, and you give it to God. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Isn't that something? You can finally find something that you can do for God. Embracing, allowing God to do something for you is the best thing you can do for him. Why? Because we, we, we become instruments for him when we allow him to, to, to make us better. We become instruments for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture mm -hmm. that you fit into it without even thinking. Mm -hmm. Culture, again, doing things what the culture does, doing things what everybody else do, doing things what our generations have done, cutting off the butt of the hand because that's what our great-grandmama did. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. And so again, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, so, along with Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and so 2. Can you read the traditional? Okay, in the traditional. Yeah, I would method, like to hear, yeah. It, the King James, the King James Version says this. It was right there. Uh, right there. King James Version says this. This is what most people know. Yes. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present yourself or present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. That's the word. That's what, yeah. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, yes. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, requires us, if we want to get rid of the sinful nature, we want to get rid of this thing that has been in our family from generation to generation, it, 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 it can stop right there with you. Yes, it can. You don't, you don't have to continue to do it. It can stop with you. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, and, and so we talked about that. If salvation breaks the ultimate generational curse of original sin, it will also break the consequence of any sins in your, in, in your life. Amen. It, it will break it. If it's strong enough, if, if the power of Jesus Christ dying on the cross is enough to break the original sin right. that happened way back with Adam, right. you know what it's able to do in your life. What's in your life ain't nothing compared right. to what Adam did and, and how God was able to come in and clean that up. Yes. The challenge for us is to continue to walk out what God has done in, mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. We have to walk it out. If we are in Christ, we are no longer a prisoner to our past. Amen. We're not prisoners to our past. Mm -hmm. Stop saying, I'm going to always be this way. Right. I, I can't change. Don't, do not allow that to be mm -hmm. your confession. Right. I can't change. I've, I've always had a high blood pressure, and I'm going right. to always have high blood pressure. You, you're confessing. The Bible says that life and death are in the power of your yes. tongue. Yes, yes. If you continue to speak it, then that's what you're going to have. Exactly. You shall have whatsoever you say. That's right. We can change our lives. You can change we, your we life, can, and it starts with your lives. confession first. Mm -hmm. and, and even salvation comes with our confession. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. What is it? Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. Let's go there real quick. And it's almost time to look. Okay, we got time. Let's go there. Romans chapter 9. Got to read this. Yeah, while you're looking for that, I would mm -hmm. just say, you know, for those who are viewing it, even for us, if we have those areas in our lives where, you know, we feel like, okay, well, this has been in our family for a long time. It's probably some, it's probably some learned behavior. It, that that needs to be addressed. Yeah. So I would say really just sit down, really think about your life, think about some of those things that really don't, that you, some of those ways or some of those things in your life that may not represent who you know God is calling us to be. Mm -hmm. 
And I would say, okay, and, and make a decision. Just declare that whatever that learned behavior is or whatever it seems like that curse is that keeps being passed down, that you make a decision that it's going to stop with you. That's right. Because it just as sinful natures or sinful behaviors can be passed down, guess what? Godly behaviors can be passed down. Yes. Oh, and with that, that gives me an entryway for, um, go ahead and read. You got a script you want to read? Yeah, I wanted to read this. We were talking about confession. I was saying that mm-hmm. the, the, the turn of your life, it, it, it starts with your confession. Mm-hmm. And I said that even salvation begins with a confession. Mm-hmm. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 says this, that if thou shalt confess... Mm-hmm. With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, mm-hmm. thou shalt be saved. So your, your salvation, our salvation comes with our confession mm-hmm. because life and death is in the power of our tongue. So you, you, can, you can confess that you don't have to have blood pressure anymore. Even though, that, even though you may go to the doctors and they do a test or you got a whole blood pressure check at home and it may seem like you, it may look like you do. You have to begin to confess that you don't. But confession alone is not enough. You have to change your behaviors. You confess it, and your confession may be, I'm going to stop eating as much pork so that I will no longer have high blood pressure. I decree and declare I do not have blood, high blood pressure. And the gays may be saying you got high blood pressure, but you begin to speak those things, and you, you're, you're saying that I'm not going to have high blood pressure anymore because I have changed my behavior. And Jesus has given me the ability mm. and the strength to do what I need to do. Yes, 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 yes. Go ahead. So I want to go take us to uh, Old Testament. I want to go to Deuteronomy chapter 30. Mm. I'm going to read it in the NIV. And then I want to go and read it in the um, King James' traditional version. Okay. But Deuteronomy, we're going to start at chapter 11. Uh, chapter 11. Chapter 15, <laughs> verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 30. Chapter 11. I'm goodness gracious. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter, 30, chapter 30, verse 11. Verse 11. Goodness. Just do what Marcia did. What would you say on Sunday? <laughs> 2 Corinthians. <laughs> 2 Corinthians, verse 1. That's all right. We knew what she was talking about. <laughs> yeah, 2 Corinthians. So now in the NIV, it, it, it captions this as, I'm reading in the NIV, the offer of life or death. And it reads, now what... I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you to, that is not, let me slow down, let me start over. Now, what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. Who's speaking? Tell me. I'm asking you. I, we need to know who's speaking. I don't know. This is, isn't this the Lord speaking? Baby, that's what I want you to say. I, I want to. I thought it was a trick question. No, it ain't a trick question. Okay, so you tell us. It's the Lord, is it? I don't, I don't know because I'm not with you right now. Deuteronomy 30, this is, I think this is. This is the Lord speaking to Moses yes. and Moses speaking to, for the Lord? Right. Okay. Chapter 11. I mean, verse 11. <laughs> Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. Thank you. Now what I am commanding you today is not too difficult for you or beyond your reach. It is not up in heaven so that you have to ask who will ascend into heaven to get it and proclaim it to to us so we may obey it. Nor is it beyond the sea so that you have to ask who will cross the sea to get it and proclaim it to us so we may obey it. No. The word is very near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it. See, I set before you today life and prosperity. In the King James Version, it says life and death, right? For I command you uh, death and destruction. And in the King James Version, it says uh, blessings and cursings. Mm. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him, and to keep his commandments, decrees, and laws. Then you will, inc- you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Mm. So, okay, let's, so let's read it in the King James Version. Because we're talking about uh, life and death, blessings and cursing. Mm-hmm. So, um, Verse 11, 
For this commandment which I command thee this day is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should, should ask who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say who shall go over the sea for us and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. See, I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and judgment that thou mayest live and multiply. Oh, well, so this wasn't the version I wanted then. Maybe it's in the end. Well, the same, New same King thing. Version. I know what you're talking about. Uh, I wanted to see the words mm -hmm. that was so I could drive it yeah. home, but it's okay. And uh -oh. so, so it comes, what it boils down to is us making a decision, making a choice. Just like yes. God, just like sinful behaviors can continue to be passed down, right. godly behaviors can continue to be passed down. You can transform your family line from generational curses to generational blessings. Right. My family can my, my family now begins to live off of blessings instead of curses. Amen. Regardless of what my forefathers done. That's right. My family now they're blessed. They're blessed in their comings mm -hmm. and they're blessed in their mm -hmm. goings. That's mm -hmm. my confession of my family. I pray that every every morning. They're blessed. My 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 my, my loins is blessed. My my seed is blessed. Mm -hmm. And I'm, they're blessed. So regardless of what has happened before, because of, because of what Christ. Because Christ has the victory. And because if Christ has the victory, I have the victory. And so, therefore, we have to know. You have to believe that. That's why salvation is about faith. you got to believe it. It's a, it's a faith walk. Abraham said this. He said, I am fully persuaded. Mm -hmm. You have to be fully persuaded that what Christ did on the cross, it broke, it broke the chains. It broke the, the, the dominion of sin over your life. It broke the dominion of death over your life. That you no longer have to live that way. You can you can rise up and live a righteous life and you can know and, and you don't have to be the only one blessed. You can begin to bless your family. Yeah. Our families, history and baggage impacts who we are as a people, whether we like it or not. You may consider your family a blessing or consider them a burden because of the long history of negative traits they've passed down. Uh, an example, we talked about that. That's what I want to read. You found it? Yeah, babe. Okay, so mm -hmm. read that little portion again. Well, it's not yeah. even, I needed to go down some. It's in verse 19. It's in 19. We'll just read 19 then. 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that you, both you and your descendants mm. may live that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life and the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to you, to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give them. Mm -hmm. That's what I, because I wanted to tie that still, it in. That's that, still Deuteronomy chapter 30? Yes. But it's in verse 19. Yes, gotcha. because I want to make the connection that Number one is a choice, and when you make the choice to obey God and, and do his word and his commandments, then as you just got through saying, you're setting a new way of living. Mm -hmm. And as it says here in 19, therefore choose life that both you and your descendants, that's generations, mm -hmm. yeah. may live. That's right. So I, I want to read that. And so now you may be wondering, we, we're, about, we're about to close, but you may be wondering, you know, do you have a generational curses, you know, things that have, that have been passed down to you and you, you're doing them? You know, you may have some behaviors that are not godly behaviors and someone may have told you that they're going to always be a part of your life. That's not true. They don't have to always be there. You, you have to identify them and then begin to take them before God, just like everything else we do. You got to take it before the Lord and take it and leave it there. Uh, but allow him to do the work. But God, this is the thing about God. God is not going to do anything that he has given you the ability to do for yourself. Right, right. I learned that myself, man. God is not going to do anything for you that he has given you the ability to do. What he does is that what he has given you the ability to do, he will assist you in doing it. 
which makes it, it takes it. This is why Jesus says, take my yoke upon you, or upon you and learn of me. He's, the yoke is something that used to be around the neck on the animal's ye- neck. The yoke that's before Jesus, the yoke that's around our neck before Jesus comes into our life is a heavy yoke. It's a yoke of sin. And Jesus is saying, take that yoke, that sinful yoke off and put my yoke on. My yoke is easy and it's light. And he said, and then allow me to teach you my ways. If you allow Jesus to teach you, your, his, teach you his ways, there's freedom in that. Man, there's freedom. There's so much freedom. I tell people all the time, no, I, in my life, I don't have everything I want. There's some things I want God has decided for me I don't need. And I'm okay with that. But it doesn't change the fact that I don't want it. I still want it. I, mean, I want a million dollars. In fact, I want a hundred million dollars. That's what I want. But God may not see fit that I need a hundred million dollars. And because I've given my life to him, I've allowed him to make me and mold me and to transform me and to conform me into the vessel that he wants me to be. I'm okay with not having a hundred million dollars. I'm okay with not having any money as long as he, I got Jesus. To be honest with you guys, I've been poor before. I've been broke. But I've had God all my life, man. I've had God with me, and God has helped me through so many hard times. I'd rather, what's the old song? I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Kurt Franklin, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold, man. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold because I am interested in the quality of life right now, not so much the quantity because I've realized that if I allow God to have my life, the quality of my life begins to change. And because the quality, quality of my life begins to change, the quantity of those things that come into my life, though even the quantity of those things, those things that come into my life, now even those things are even of better value. And not just, you know, God's not just giving me a car, but he's giving me a better type of car. You know what I'm saying? He shows his favor. He gives me not just any old house, but he gives me a good house. You know, he, he gives me good things. And he says that the blessings of the Lord maketh rich and add of no sorrow. The blessing of the Lord maketh one rich and adds no sorrow to it. The blessings of the Lord. And so, but you can only receive the blessings of the Lord if you belong to him, if you've given your life to him, if you have trust in him. That's all God wants to do. He wants us to trust him. And those things that he needs to work out, this is the other thing, guys. Don't get so caught up in you listing those things that you want worked out of your life first. Go take it to God and allow God to begin to, to prioritize those things that need to be taken out of your life. I know there's some things that we say, oh, man, I need to get rid of this first. I need to get rid of that first. And if that's okay, take it to the Lord. That same Holy Spirit that I told you will help you get rid of those things. That same Holy Spirit will begin to prioritize those things in your life that really need to fall off first. Because there are some things that may need to fall off. You may think that, that, that it may be... Um, uh, uh, maybe uh, you may think that you talk too much, but the Holy Spirit may say, well, there's a root cause why you talk too much. And so the Holy Spirit will begin to get, identify that root cause of why you talk too much. And if you deal with the root, then the fruit will, 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 will be cast out. So, we, so the Holy Spirit, you allow the Holy Spirit to deal with the root cause of why you do the things you do. Sometimes we do things and we think, well, let me just stop doing that. Let me stop lying. You know, and you, 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 you saying, well, I've been taken to God and I still, I'm still a liar. I don't know why. I just can't help it. I can't help it. That's because you ain't dealt with the root, the root of why you're a liar. You, you haven't dealt with that. So that's why God, that's why the Holy Spirit is so, so important because you can't see the root. Sometimes you, you can't identify the root. But the Bible tells us that the Holy Spirit knows all things. He knows all things and he knows how to, he knows to even how to make intercession for us when we don't know how to pray. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us. And he comes in and he prays those things because we can't see everything. We don't know everything. But God does and the Holy Spirit does. Now for those of you that are out there tonight, if you want to make a change in your life, you want to give your life to Christ, if you've never given your life to Christ before, you guys, hey, you can do that tonight, man. You can make a decision to give your life to Christ and allow God to be the Lord of your life. That's really the beginning, man. It's not just so much. I said this before. Getting saved is the easy part, man. Getting delivered is going to take some work. That deliverance is everything we talked about tonight. That deliverance is getting rid of those sinful behaviors. That's where the work comes in then. But God, you ain't got to do it alone. That's the good part about it. You don't have to work it out on your own, man. God works it out for you. 
He works it, he'll work it out for you, man. But he wants you to come and just give him the opportunity to do it. And I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you guys, man, the quality of your life will change day by day, month by month, year by year. You begin to see a change in your life. And the reason why I'm saying that is not because of me. I man, you can go in this probably millions, not probably there are millions of people that will give you the same answer, same thing. You ask them, why, why, why you used to serve Jesus Christ? They'll tell you the same thing. Because I have not found anything better. I've tried it. I've tried everything. And this is the only thing that works for me. And this thing works. Hey, guys, if you haven't given your life to Christ, come on, pray with me. This is a prayer of salvation, a prayer of confession and salvation. You can give your life to Christ today. If you want to get rid of generational curses, this prayer also will help you guys. Say this prayer with me. Father God, you know my life. And you know how I've lived it. I ask you, Father, to come into my heart and forgive me. I believe in your son. His name is Jesus. He died on the cross for me. And on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. Thank you, Father, for allowing Jesus Christ to be my Lord and my Savior. And Father... If there are any behaviors that I need to get rid of, I give them to you tonight. Teach me your ways. I want to learn of you. I want to be more like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, saints, man, we praise God for you guys. Family, friends, thank you so much for joining us. I pray that you have enjoyed tonight's Bible study. We want to continue to do those things that God has given us on our heart, laid upon our hearts to do. You guys that are out there, don't forget, man, don't forget my wife and I, we're preparing for our, our dance competition November the 6th. We're going to be in Philly competing against three other couples, man. These are God-fearing couples. They're pastors and deacons. But you know what? We, we're going to win. We're going to Philly to win. And we're representing, number one, I'm, you know, of course, I'm representing the, just my, me and my wife. I said me. Me and my wife, we're representing the southeast region down here, Atlanta region. But I'm also a homeboy from New Jersey. So, hey, I'm looking for my Jersey folks to support us, too. Uh, amen. So you guys come on down and support us. Looking forward to seeing everybody uh, stream in with us. Next, this coming Sunday, guys, join in with us. I got a speaker. She's going to be coming and giving us a word this coming Sunday. First lady's teaching this Sunday. Praise the Lord. She's going to be ministering this Sunday, giving, giving me an opportunity to come and be taught uh, through her, by her, through the Holy Spirit. Love you guys so much. And then next Wednesday, we'll be back doing our, our, our Bible study. I don't even know what we're going to teach next Wednesday night. Marsha, I don't know. Marsha might even teach next Wednesday night, depending on what the Lord gave her to teach. All right, love you guys so much, and until the next time, man, I'm Pastor T here at the Bridge Church of Alabama, where we're loving God, loving people, and pursuing purpose. I'm here with the Bridge Eyes, First Lady, and Marsha, and the rest of our Bridge family. We love you guys so much, and until the next time, may God be with you. May he keep you, protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger. May you prosper in everything you do, and when you put your hand to the plow, don't look back. Keep looking forward. Keep your head to the sky. That's where your blessings come from. Love you guys. Have a good night. God bless. I'm out. Thank <laughs> you.